Hey, 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 it's Chrissy Lulu. So first things first, um, this video is going to be dealing with me drawing nude people. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're uncomfortable about that, just feel free to click away and watch a different video. I'm just going to go over how to draw from life and what to do if you don't have the resources to draw from life near you. Okay, so with that, um, let's get right into it. So today I'm drawing from two different sites. Um, I'll be using Senshi Sock on DeviantArt. I'll put her link in the description so you can find her. She is a stock reference pose lady and she does awesome poses. She's got many different models who model for her. She's got both men and women and they're all of your average size. They aren't like model proportion people. So if you're trying to draw like just your average human proportions, she can be very good for doing that. Um, the next one is a site. Let's see. It's, I'll put the link in the description for you guys. It's lineofaction.com and it is figure drawing and it's all nude models or it's nude and clothed models but you can choose whether you want nude models, clothed models, and the gender of your models and how long you want your drawing session to be. So with this one I did mainly 10 minute sessions um, with line of action and I did most of my drawings from the line of action site. Uh, they're poses and their models all their material is really great they have some older stuff um, and I'm pretty sure they do credit every model you'll see multiples of the same model doing a bunch of different poses so I think it's very helpful with learning how to just draw in your own time and with a site like this you don't have to go out into the art world you don't have to go searching you don't have to go searching for somewhere that offers new models like I know probably after college I'm probably not gonna have the nice <laughs> I'm going to call it quote-unquote free um, nude modeling that we have in our classrooms which is actually amazing to have them there and they have different poses which is kind of the benefit of doing it in real life and you can kind of more see 3d of the person and it makes it sometimes easier to kind of translate them to your paper um, then again um, having kind of action and just the pictures of the models you don't have to worry about your model moving you don't have to reset them you don't have to give them breaks because it's just a picture you can spend as long as you want on it well with models in real life you have to give them breaks and course they're right there so they're gonna move but yeah those are just some of the differences between using picture sites of models and having them in real life um, so let's get into more of why it's important to kind of practice from nude or nearly nude models um, so I've already talked about this a little bit with like kind of artistic nudity in a previous video, I can add that to the little tabs over here. But yeah, um, when you're working with nude bodies, you're really just getting the straight up anatomy. You don't have anything that is concealing anything. There's nothing there to kind of fool your eye as to what the body looks like underneath and what the pose is and what the body is doing in that pose. So there's nothing that is kind of concealing what you're trying to look at. It makes it much easier to get down anatomy. And knowing anatomy, it doesn't matter what kind of style you're drawing in, realistic or cartoony, anatomy is very important when you want to kind of break the rules and bend the rules. Um, you need to have a basis in your anatomy before doing pretty much anything. So. Having the nude models there can help you kind of learn how the body works and you can even study faces from these guys and you can study kind of like 
how their hair is moving and the muscles underneath. You can just see, sometimes you can even see like their bone structure, which it's, I think it's more helpful. Yes, you can just look at the straight anatomy of a skeleton, but skeleton, of course, does not have all the fat on it, which is a big problem with skeletons, especially in like the forensics fields when you're trying to identify like who a skeleton is, like a skull. So the most important part of the body is kind of like the muscle and the fat on your body. So that's why it's important to really just look at the, just the body just in the raw. And there's many way, different ways you can do this. Um, I did some long or short-ish, long-ish sections of just 10 minute intervals. I also did a couple of really quick ones. Uh, on the quicker ones, I kind of did more of an enveloping of the body, which is actually something that's pretty helpful. Um, it does, it's not going to look like much of anything to you. It's just going to be a sloppy kind of envelope of this man's body and kind of the cloth he was holding. Uh, and this can be helpful for quick studies. And just when you're doing studies like this, they don't have to be perfect, of course. Um, often you're not going to be showing these to anyone and it's really just for your own practice and your own good. So you can do a little quick practices, they're good for warm-ups um, and they can really help you get into just drawing and you can go as detailed or as undetailed as you want if you just want to envelope the body and do just that and not go into the body too much and not do all the details or the shading, you can do that. Um, it's really not, n there's no real right way to do it as long as you're drawing the bodies as for what you see. And don't worry if you're not good. Um, not everyone is going to start off perfect with drawing the body. Um, it's a very complicated thing and anyone who's able to draw it should be very pleased with themselves for kind of being able to capture that. Um, so as you can see, I did just a lot of different kind of ones. I did some in pencil where I could erase, some in pen, where everything I put down was just kind of permanent. And I just went with it. Um, and then I did a couple of longer ones. Um, the one that I took the longest on was that Senshi stock, stock picture. Um, that's of two of their models. Um, you just go to her DeviantArt and you can click through all her folders. You can also, I think she's got a Patreon where you can get the paid, the paid stocks. So that's even more stock for you to use. Of course, she does have tons of free stuff for you to use. And she's a very good source to use. Um, but yeah, I did two of the models and I kind of went really into detail with that one with drawing all the hands drawing their faces, drawing their hair, and trying to make sure I got everything right. Um, so this is kind of what you'd expect if you were to take, any, take um, a figure studies class. Of course, you can just do a bunch of quick ones, but it's all going to be of the same pose, most likely, unless they're doing a lot of switching of poses. But um, doing the long studies can actually be really helpful, and you can actually teach yourself new mediums. So if you're like, oh, I don't really understand pen or I don't understand watercolor, you can use watercolor to kind of finish off your longer study of a piece and do kind of a more finished piece of work from just the model in class or wherever you're going to be. You can do this also with stock photos or whatever. You can do like long studies and really just take out a new medium and kind of use that to kind of enhance your work. If you're comfortable with drawing the human body, this can be very great because you're not dealing with too many new things at once. If you're fairly new to drawing the human body, I'd say you might want to hold back on this just for a little bit, just so you can get comfortable with the body before you add in extra things to worry about like a new medium. Um, 
But also, everyone kind of has a little bit of different anatomy. So some people are going to be harder to draw than others. I've actually heard that, like, people who are out of the ordinary, um, just anatomy-wise, like, really muscular people or, like, very, very thin people are the hardest to draw just because they're not what you're used to drawing and your first couple of drawings of them might turn out very bad even if you are good at drawing just your quote-unquote average person so yeah um just kind of wanted to put my input in on how important it is for you to study the body and that you don't need a class nearby to actually go out and really study how the human body is and you don't have to pay any money to teach yourself this stuff. Um, of course it can be helpful to take an official class where you have someone who's already got the knowledge and is going to be teaching you how to do stuff and helping you know what is looking wrong, what is looking right, so you know what to look for in the future and to help improve your eyes. But, of course, not everyone has the money to do stuff like this. And if you're a beginning artist, if you're young, this might be your only option. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you took something out of it. And, yeah. Um, if you want to see more from me, Make sure to subscribe, um, click that like button, and of course, if you've got anything to say, write a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!